Well, good morning. My name is Vincent Peake. I am a biology student at Whitworth University. I currently work as the compost director over there, uh, creating uh, innovative ideas and kind of agendas on campus to get students involved in sustainability. Uh, what I'm going to talk to you about today is Share Farm, but I kind of want to go over a few things of uh, the history of how it became, um, some problems, solutions that we've devised to uh, address some of the concerns that we've seen, and then our partnership and vision with, with higher education and K-12 students over time. And so my previous occupation, I worked uh, surveillance and target acquisition for the Marine Corps for a good number of years. Uh, the, the primary premise of our job was to be a long range surveillance, so we'd be in like austere, odorous conditions for sometimes weeks at a time, so they'd leave us out there. And it was imperative, like a skill that we learned was field skills. And this is land navigation, uh, plant identification, human track and sign, animals, obtaining food. And as I was involved in this and learning this skill and trying to make it part of myself, I found the importance of what types of foods I put into my body, how it's going to sustain me through you know, the next few weeks, if so, if that's what it's going to take. And so what I found is uh, being in this environment, learning about uh, you know, local, local wild foods, uh, wilderness medicine, I knew that this became, you know, uh, I created a relationship with this idea. I was like, I, you know, I want to be an ecological steward uh, as I learned that, you know, this really impacts and takes a part in, in my life and the lives of others. And so I took this with me as I transitioned out. I attended a wilderness apprenticeship on the west side, and, and same thing, field skills was like the bottom line, the foundational knowledge to learn here. And what we learned here is that, you know, field skills, animal tracking, plant ID, uh, mostly focused at botany. This uh, Native American instructor, she taught me something useful that I think I'll, I'll value for the rest of my life is ethnopharmacology. So it's the study of how past cultures have used plants as medicine. And I loved it. It became my passion. Uh, it's, it's all I actually want to do with the rest of my life. And so I took this. I came back to Spokane. I started a small business uh, selling tinctures and salves, uh, essential oils. And so I'd go out into the wilderness using my plant systematics knowledge that I had learned from this school and collect plants, bring them back home, extract them, wildcraft them, and, and attend festivals, holistic shows, home or garden shows, and sell my product. And I was so welcomed in that environment that I, I really enjoyed it. I wanted to make it something that I did for the rest of my life. So I moved on. I, I put my product in some... Uh, physical therapy offices, um, trying to get into maybe a more mainstream market to meet the demand that I knew was there uh, and address this demographic. But it became, there became a lot of barriers of trying to get into uh, large-scale stores compared to where I was working at, uh, festivals and local business. So it became, it became a pretty serious challenge. And so I... I wanted to try and develop a way to solve these issues that I was facing, these barriers uh, to the marketplace. Initial investment without support and resources, especially for a new business like me. And uh, I mean, I'm not a business major, so I was using mentorship from people that I met to try and, try and make this happen, and it wasn't so. And so I knew there had to be a marketplace where this demand could meet this supply, because I knew that it was there. You know, most of the sh festivals and shows that I would attend, I'd sell out my product. I knew people wanted to participate in this, but um, you know, maybe I wasn't. You know, I didn't have the right kind of resources to meet that, meet that higher market. And so, thus was uh, maybe more implementation, more study. I did some uh, agricultural internships, uh, ecological assistantships through my school. I attended some farmers markets. I polled. I asked the vendors. I asked the customers. You know what are the real barriers that you face? What are real challenges? Because I've experienced my own, but I want to know what everyone else's were. And through this time and a culmination of knowledge, uh, I, I produced Share Farm. Share Farm, in my opinion, is a revolutionary approach to the vendor marketplace. It is mobile technology. It is a free-to-use mobile application that supports farmers' markets. It's a mobile farmer's market. Uh, we're releasing the technology uh, around the end of March. 
And what this does is it alleviates those initial investments, those problems and concerns that vendors are facing, and also solves some solutions that our community members are having accessing those goods. How it works is, just like uh, your Google Maps, it's geocentric. It works off your proximity. So if I'm a vendor, I can list items that I have for sale with ease. If I do pickup, delivery, if I participate in community-supported agriculture, which is like weekly, monthly, could be yearly subscriptions where I pay for my food ahead of time, for the customer, what this does is it allows me to easily access, find, and locate products on the market that maybe I'm looking for outside of things like Craigslist, which are pretty extremely ineffective if you've ever used it. And so a lot of the issues that I had seen I wanted to make a platform, a seller's market, that addressed all of these concerns. And what, I, what I'm hoping that this will achieve is, as the demand is met for this, it's going to increase entrepreneurship in the community and you know, add a diversity to the customer base and revenue stream of local vendors, which can only help the community, uh, especially with local tax dollars, even at that. It, we've seen that when we buy from local producers and vendors you know, those families sustain off supporting uh, their families through, through sales of their products. And so if, when they sell goods into the community, they purchase things back in the community. You know, they buy it from, you know, uh, stores that are close to them. And so we see about 6 to 7% increase in econo economic stimulus when we shop local compared to uh, larger chain stores where around 1% is put back in economic stimulus. And so it's not... It's not actually that helpful. Um, so the problems, the problems. We've seen so many problems um, accessing food. Co co community members trying to access food, but mostly vendors being able to sell, sell their goods. So the, the farmer's market, we know it's like from May to October, and that's kind of flexible. And so through the rest of the year, our local vendors in our community, they don't have access to sell to you know, the community members. Most of their products, most of the vendors that I've talked to, their product goes bad trying to sell. They can't find, uh, they, they feel disconnected. They don't have a network to sell from. Like again, Craigslist is their only other option, word of mouth. We all know it's effective, but it's not meeting the needs of local vendors. For the customer, um, they were running out of options to find goods. All the customers that I talked to said, yeah, outside of the market season, I can't find anything local unless I already know these people. And so that's what I wanted to address with Share Farm. I wanted to solve these solutions. I wanted to create a solution to all these problems that I was hearing about, uh, the same problems that I experienced trying to get into the seller's marketplace. And so Share Farm solved these solutions by making an ease of use into the market. And instead of uh, you know, customers not being able to locate a, a vendor or a specific item that they're trying to find, now they can, ease of use, by proximity. I can order it, I can get it shipped to me. Um, but at the same rate, a lot of things that I had heard, specifically uh, customers not being able to, thinking that there are barriers to the farmer's market, which if, if you shop at a farmer's market, you know that's not true. A lot of people I talked to, they thought, it was, they thought there was a barrier to, to purchasing from a farmer's market. And I was like, well, no, you know, that's misinformation. And so those, those kinds of things I want to alleviate and also incorporate some higher education and K-12 influence into this uh, through time. And so when I, when I go out and talk to anyone, if we talk to anyone right now, if I ask you, do you care about where your food is from? Do you care about the bioavailability, the nutritional content? Everyone says yes. Everyone has an interest in this. But intent, you know, 56% of the people that I've talked to, they do go out and purchase. But the other percentage, they're interested, but they're not purchasing from local goods. And in, in my opinion, from me talking to them, the barrier, they think there's barriers to the farmer's market. Or maybe they're not entirely educated on the health uh, benefits and factors of eating local resourced food. And so I really want to uh, moderate this. I want to fix it. I want to create a platform for sellers and vendors to interact with community members on a more cohesive basis and create relationships. Our, um, Club president, Anne Marie, you'll have the pleasure of hearing speak. She set up a lecture for us. And I had the pleasure of meeting uh, Dr. Marcia Olstrom. And she had been in the market a lot longer than me, studying the exact same thing that I had been trying to gain information on. Uh, way more method methodical manner, uh, some really good techniques, Q&As, polls. She met with vendors. 
for the vendors, their biggest complaint just that I found was there's no networking, there's no cohesion, there's no connectedness for them outside of the farmer's market. And they always need to sell, always. For the customer, though, she found some rather interesting information is that the customer could not spend enough money. They, they ran out of money, even if there's no ATMs in the farmer's market or the vendor wasn't using the uh, swipe pass that you plug into your mobile device. And so I thought it was uh, really interesting that vendors have more product than they can sell and customers running out of money to be able to purchase those goods. And so I wanted to you know, remove this disconnect and create some kind of cohesion between them. Uh, all of us know uh, health, uh, health-minded individuals, uh, fitness, all these industries are on the rise. But farmers markets have been on the rise for the past five years. We see a 20% increase in farmers markets. And so if this was a stock, uh, in, tw in five years we get a 20% return, all of us would invest in it, right? And people are. Almost every single Fortune 500 company to date has an organic counterpart, a natural byproduct to food, clothing, textiles, renewable energy. They know this demand is there. They're already accessing it. You know, it's a $35 billion a year industry. And so we, we know it's valuable, viable option. We know it's scalable. And ShareFarm's kind of just an approach to dealing with this uh, rise in demand. People in our own community are already participating in this. Um, Doug Wardell, I've had the pleasure of meeting and creating a relationship with. Fascinating individual. He's the director of nutrition for Spokane Schools. He spends around $175,000 a year buying from local farmers, even if it costs more, because they care about the nutritional content that they provide to the youth. So what they do, they have a, a grassroots farm-to-table program that they've been running for a few years now. They invite a farmer in, a local farmer. He brings some food with them. They sit down with the children. They teach them where the food comes from, how it was grown, what the importance of that food is to them. And then they make a meal out of it. And all the kids are actively engaged in it. They love it. They love being independent and learning new things. And so these are, these are programs going on in our own community now. And so I, it's absolutely beneficial, the educational experience that kids can gain from this. Uh, as we heard Jeremy talk about already, it's absolutely beneficial that we, we involve the youth, we involve students in this atmosphere. There's farms in our area that already participate in this. Uh, John Crow at Estella Geothermal Farms, they're doing ecological remedy, uh, ecological malpractice, practicing permaculture. Tolstoy Farms, uh, they're a USDA certified organic farm in our own community. They're all actively participating in this. They want people to you know, become educated, participate in the farm with them. Um, and so this is, this is kind of where we're going to try and meet this need is with higher education and K-12 students. So we've just recently been uh, you know, approved and partnered with the Inland Northwest Service Learning Partnership. So this is an organization of all the universities in the area, Gonzaga, Whitworth, Eastern, WSU Satellite Campus, um, the community colleges where if students come and participate with us, come to farms, learn about uh, permaculture, organic agriculture, seed harvesting, uh, growing food, they can receive college credit for participating in this event. At the very least, volunteer hours, which a lot of students, as they go through internships, they require these to graduate. So it's absolutely a beneficial program. For the K-12 students, John Edmondson, he's the founder of Growing Neighbors, and this is, this is the you know, address to the K-12 section, is that he's taking students out, teaching them fitness, education, health, and mentality, working in community gardens. And so we want to take both of these platforms, the service learning partnership, the K-12, and have them come together and create you know, a real mentorship environment where they can work together. They understand the importance you know, from their you know, higher, higher uh, educated you know, peers, at the least, to where there's, there's a real a want and a need, a desire to learn these types of topics. And so what, what we want to do, what I, what I really hope to achieve is uh, widespread education. Remove this misinformation and understanding of food, uh, health, and wellness in the community. What I believe is, uh, and I, I'm sure you do too, if we teach one person, if one person becomes educated and involved and starts caring about themselves and their outward community. This can only be replicated by people that they teach it to. And my goal overarching, the global idea, is to get more and more people, uh, as the day goes on, involved and really educated on 
food, health, wellness, purchasing local, investing in our neighbors, you know, valuing our community in whole. And so uh, we're going to start in Spokane. Spokane's our home. We love Spokane. Uh, we're moving to Portland, Seattle, Denver, San Diego, really trying to implement this service learning, mentorship with K-12 into other schools outside of our region. But we're absolutely going to start here. I'm pretty much right at my mark. Uh, I'm going to show you this video. We're pretty well known for our corn. It's the best in the market, so everybody tells me so. We sell grass-fed beef and pastured poultry. We're making alcohol out of locally sourced honey. I grow organically without the title. Are you looking for cage-free eggs, organic produce, or grass-fed beef? Welcome to Share Farm. We're much more than a place, we're an app. A one-of-a-kind, free-to-use app that connects local vendors and consumers looking to buy and sell fresh produce and artesian goods. At Share Farm, there is no market season. We're open 24-7, year-round, allowing consumers to find and purchase produce and goods anytime, anywhere. Complete that purchase directly through the app using any major credit card, PayPal, or Bitcoin. Consumers can then easily arrange for pickup or delivery and even rate your seller directly through the app. I think it's a good way for a customer to get a hold of a farmer, you know, because it only goes from about May until October. And then after that, the farmer's markets are pretty much over. And sometimes the markets are done before the harvest is actually done and wrapped up and ready to go. So we have a huge surplus of meat usually throughout the winter. Got to keep selling. So if that customer base can be created, I think that I would use it. Anyone can sell their goods on Share Farm. All you need is a social media account to set up your vendor profile. Having an app, which would be really handy, it would be easier to use and put my product out there. We do a lot of pushing through social media too, but if there was an app where actually people were aware of it, and a lot of you know millennials today, they like ding, 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 you know, they do the ding, and <laughs> they like using apps and staying connected that way. Once you get them to connect, and if you can deliver that product to them year-round, they'll, they'll buy it. Vendors have the unique ability to become certified to share farm standards in order to ensure the quality and purity of their freshly grown produce and goods. Share Farm certification requires an on-site, physical inspection of goods and practices to obtain the inexpensive Share Farm certification standard. This allows vendors to differentiate themselves on the market. Our well is right in the middle of our produce field and it's only 43 feet deep, so we don't uh, put any herbicides or pesticides in our soil. We're uh, organic without being certified in the state of Washington for organic. From start to finish, we want to make a good product but also leave the earth better. Food is everything, you know, it's, it's life. And so if you can connect with people, you know what you're eating, you can feel better. Join the Share Farm community and become part of the world's first online farmer's market. We need your help to kickstart the Share Farm app. Take a stand for your health by investing in your neighbors, valuing your community, and preserving the precious environment in order to bring farm to table today. What I did, I left a, uh, a pamphlet out in the foyer on the sponsor table. Uh, it's a link to this video, a website, if you want more information about what we're doing, how we're trying to implement education in the community. Absolutely viable. Thank you. <laughs>